You know, one thing that makes the hot rod world so unique is that it's so diverse. I mean, you've got muscle cars out there. You've got sports cars. You've got four by fours and off-road vehicles. You've got hot rods. You've got street rods. I mean, you've got a lot of stuff going on. But one of the most unique things that's happening in the hot rod world is what we call the vintage car or the nostalgia rod. Now, this is where you take a vehicle and you build it up to match a certain era or attitude. And sometimes the rougher, the better. But to pull off this kind of buildup, well, first of all, the car has got to be functional because you got to drive it. Second of all, it's got to be fairly accurate. And a prime example of that is this old Dodge pickup. The owner, John Clark, wanted to build a truck that looked like an early 60s shop truck. So he found this old Dodge that had been sitting in a field for about 30 years, and he had the Cherry Bomb logos painted and weathered on it so they look as old as the rest of the vehicle. As you can see, it looks great. Now, since one of the best things about owning a rig like this is being able to take it out and drive it, well, John knew that he was going to have to do some modern upgrades like an engine and brakes and things like that to make this thing safe and reliable. And that's where the project started to go in a little different direction because John works at Mopar Performance. And in a moment of hot rod insanity, he stuffed a massive 528 Hemi and a Viper six-speed into that old engine bay. <laughs> That's awesome. If that wasn't enough, he then shipped it off to the guys at Cherry Bomb, where they handcrafted a fully functional set of Zumi pipes that utilizes their new bullet glass pack mufflers that have huge four inch inlets and outlets. <laughs> the whole system was designed to shake and rumble and rattle like a top fueler pulling up to the line. Unfortunately, those last two modifications caused some serious problems with the truck. I mean, first of all, the look of the vehicle's got to change a little bit. I mean, now it needs to look more like an early 60s drag or competition vehicle to match that engine and those big pipes blowing out the side. I mean, no shop truck had functional zoomy sticking out the side. The other problem is in the rear end. I mean, those stock leaf springs are going to wrap and give us wheel hop like crazy when we jump on the throttle. And of course, the reason you build an early competition style vehicle is so you can jump on the throttle. Fortunately, both of these problems are easy to fix. That's what we're going to show you. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get the bed out of the way. And with a project like this, a good penetrating lube is going to be your best friend. And there it is, in all of its vintage glory. Now, as you can see, John has already fit disc brakes and a limited slip differential to this rear end, so that's all good. The problem is in those leaf springs. Now, I know some of you guys are going, well, heck, that's easy. Just cut all that junk off of there, stick on a four-link and coilovers, and be done with it. Well, that would do it, and we've showed you how to do that in the past. The problem is that's expensive, and it's major surgery to refit a rear end like that. Not everybody can do it, and not everybody has the tools to do it. Now, this gets even more tricky because John wants to keep those leaf springs to keep this vintage look. So, putting a four-link on with leaf springs, obviously that doesn't work because the four-link came along later. So did the traction bar that goes down underneath. However, a ladder bar system, now that fits the era because guys were using it back then. It'll solve the problem. It'll allow this thing to hook up like a mother. But the question is, how do you have ladder bars and leaf springs work together and not bind up? That's what we're going to show you. All right, one of the characteristics of a leaf spring is that it gets longer as it compresses. That's what that shackle is for, to allow that spring to move a little bit. Now, that also means that right here in the middle, where the axle is, that's also going to move back and forth a little bit as the suspension cycles. Now, with a link suspension, that mounts right to the rear end, allows the rear end to move up and down, but does not allow any forward and back movement at all. So, if you've got some sort of a traction bar, a trailing arm, four link, whatever, and you're also using leaf springs, and there's no way for those bars to move back and forward a little bit, well, your suspension's binding up, it's not working right. That is not a good thing. 
Now, another thing with leaf springs, like we said, is called axle wrap or wheel hop. Now, that's when you stomp on the gas, the rear end wants to rotate up and bend this spring upward into almost an S shape. Now, as you can see, somebody has put extra clamps on here to try to hold these spring packs together to keep that from happening. But, as you can tell, it's not working. Fortunately, the solution to all these problems is sitting right over there. Come on. Okay, what we've got here are three different universal kits that we got from Summit Racing because nobody makes anything specific for a 64 Dodge pickup. Now, here's what you're looking at. You got a couple of heavy duty ladder bars made by Competition Engineering. As you can see, they're fully adjustable, so you can adjust the pinion angle and the preload. Then, of course, you got the mounting brackets and the hardware to put those in. Then we have this universal cross member and all the brackets. And this is what's going to mount the front of those ladder bars. Then the last piece is this really cool floating housing kit. This is what's going to keep our leaf springs from binding up on us. Now, the magic about using universal kits is that you can make this stuff fit just about anything you're working on, no matter how crazy it is. And that's what this show's all about. To see how this build winds up and to watch some of your favorite shows in full episodes, head on over to www.countryroadtv.com.